So to all today, the topic will be more focused around identity and access management in AWS. And we'll also go over um, basic security um, controls or monitoring that we can have to make sure uh, the IAM services and its users or the roles are not misused or over permissively granted. So let's, so this is the particular content today we are planning to uh, cover uh, in identity and access management. So we'll start with understanding what IAM is specific to the AWS. And then we'll start go. Uh, we'll we'll start going one step deeper and understand what are the key components that are present in IAM. So we'll walk through what a particular policy would would look like and how do we write a particular policy in IAM, and whatever the written policy, how do we apply it to a particular user, a group, or a role. And there are some advanced con advanced concepts as well, uh, like secure token service as well as inline policy, which will help us um, to give specific granular level uh, access. And as well as uh, if, the, if you have any automations or any scripts that needs to access AWS services or any resources, we can leverage IAM role and SDS, right? And then uh, the last final uh, part uh, of this particular presentation will focus on its security around IAM. So we'll go over uh, what are the best practices when it comes to IAM passwords, how do we handle the keys, access keys, and all these things. And on top of it, we do have one of the service that is Access Analyzer, IAM Access Analyzer. So we'll also go through and see how we can leverage this particular tool that is a native solution from AWS, and um, we'll have a better monitoring around uh, access role permissions granted, right? So. Right, so the first step is let us understand what IAM or Identity Access Management. So basically this I, IAM is a concept or a service, right? Like any service in AWS. So in AWS, we have many categories of services like a storage service, like an S3 bucket or a compute service, like a EC2 instances or a, a container or a EKS Kubernetes clusters as well as we have database uh, services as well, like an RDS or a MongoDB or a Aurora DB. So a lot of, lot of service categories are present in uh, AWS. And one such category is something known as IAM. So this IAM is uh, completely focused on the authorization level part, right? So IAM uh, concept comes in once the user logs into a particular uh, AWS account or ha uh, has access to an account. Right, so here uh, AWS uh, IAM completely focuses on what resources a particular user or a group or a role can access. Right, so in IAM we write policies, and these policies are, policies are nothing but statements or instructions where we specify a particular in a particular policy what are the um, uh, resources that a particular uh, uh, user can access and what what level of access within the uh, service can be right so we'll go one one at a time and uh, we'll have a better understanding as we go forward in this particular session so so yes iam is basically more focused on authorization or the permissions on uh, aws resources and services and it's completely works on policies so the uh, so in AWS, right, the key or the key service or the main uh, service, how the AWS functions is based on IAM, right? Without IAM, none of the services will be, uh, none of the able, uh, services will be able to communicate or uh, interact with. So IAM is specifically, as, it, as we just saw, it's, it's more focused on authorization, right? So we define policies and policies will, we'll see um, how to define what resources and what API calls are allowed or what actions are allowed on those resources, right? And how to apply this. And IAM policies can be written and uh, applied using many uh, uh, multiple ways, right? like uh, uh, AWS Web Console that we access in a browser, right? Using a console, we can also write IAM policies and attach it to a user or a group or we, uh, we can leverage uh, AWS CLI, command line tool. Or if we are a programmer or a developer, we can also leverage SDK, right? If, if there is a Python, pro Python programmer or a developer, he can leverage Porto3, 
a library that is designed by AWS. And specifically, if there is a Java developer, there is a separate library completely focuses on um, uh, AWS services. So you can leverage these libraries to write your uh, application logic or build any automations around cloud. So we'll, we'll go over what are the key components of IAM. Right, so as I told, the first key component is policy. So without policy, none of the below components will come into picture like a user or a group or a role, right? Policy is basically, it's like a simple document, a JSON document, right? And that particular document will have what service can be accessed. And in at each service level, you have list of operations. Like for example, if there is an S3 bucket or a storage service, right? Uh, we can do a lot of operations like creating an S3 bucket, deleting an S3 bucket, or writing an object or a content to an S3 bucket, modifying the existing content. So these are the operations. So within the policy, we can mention uh, what resource and top of it, what are the actions that are allowed within the policy. Once we have this written, we can apply it to the particular IAM user or a role. Right, so when that particular IAM user tries to access uh, uh, via the uh, via the AWS, right, whether CLI, SDK, or Web Console, he will be able to do only those things that are mentioned or authorized within that policy, which are attached to me. Right, so that is about policy. If it uh, so, IAM user is nothing but a single user, right? So, um, so you're working for a company. There are thousands of employees, right? So each employee will have access to not each employee, at least most of the employees around IT, um, security, uh, engineering teams, right? Will have access to AWS or the cloud resources. So each user will have a user account created using their particular official email address, right? So this is nothing but an IAM user. An IAM group is something, um, it's like a cluster of users, right? So I can give you an example of uh, organization groups, right? In an organization or a company, you'll have, a uh, set of groups like a sales group, marketing group, IT, security group, engineering group, so many groups. So rather than going ahead and attaching policy for each users, right, which is a cumbersome process. So we can go ahead and attach it to a group. So we, I'll have, an, uh, say there is a 50 people working in an IT organization group. So all I can do is just create a single group with the name of IT and then attach a policy to that group. Right, so basically the policy will say what my IT team within the company can do with an AWS, right? Whether the, uh, so say the IT team just needs access to EC2 instances, S3, and none other services apart from these two. So I can write a policy, attach it to uh, a group, and then whatever the 50 number of users, I can just bring them to this particular group, right? And then there is an, uh, somewhat a bit advanced concept known as IAM role. So the IAM role is something um, more used for uh, uh, at the resource level, right? So the first IAM user and group are targeted towards a particular user or uh, a user, whereas a role is something is specific to a particular resource, AWS resource. For example, say um, EC2 instance, right? EC2 instance uh, wants to access S3 bucket or any other AWS services. So that can be done by using IAM role. So basically one AWS resource can access an other AM resource by using an IAM role. So basically during uh, writing an IAM role, we define policies and in the policies, we'll say what are the things that particular EC2 instance can do, right? And only those are the things that the particular uh, EC2 instance can do. And then we'll go over STC, STS service, which is a very key uh, concept. If you want to understand IAM role, how it works in the backend, STS service is a key, one of the key concepts that you need, uh, need to have a good understanding. And then uh, we go over inline policy. Inline policy is like more focused around one-on-one uh, um, -on -one relation. So we'll get to know as we go along. And then we'll go over the uh, best practices around IAM passwords and access keys. So what are the types of policies are available in AWS? Right, so there are three types of policies that are available. Um, so we'll start with AWS managed policies. So these policies are nothing but um, AWS provides us these policies as a 
package, right? Once we have an AWS account, we have registered with an AWS, we'll get us, we'll get a set of policies. Uh, I think it's more than 200 policies. So we can basically consume those policies based on our needs, right? Say, and second set of policy, uh, second type of policy is more around customer managed. So customer managed, managed policies are those policies that uh, a company requires a customized way of writing policy where uh, the via the AWS managed policy, we are not able to get it, right? If there is a policy that you need to combine multiple resources together in a single policy or a, any kind of other services which are not part of AWS managed policies, then we can write our own customer managed policies. And then we have the third one known as inline policies. Inline policies is something very similar to the uh, AWS managed as well as customer managed. The difference is it's a one-on-one -on -one relation, right? So when we talk about AWS managed policies and customer managed policies, the first two, these two policies, when we write a AWS or customer managed policies, we can apply this policy to any number of IAM entities. So when I say entities, it can be IAM users, IAM groups or IAM role. So this, uh, the first two policies can be applied to any, any numbers, right? Whereas inline policy is targeted to a, targeted to a specific um, user or a group specific. And this policy once created and attached to a user cannot be attached to another user, right? Um, and also the visibility. So inline policy, uh, there won't be any visibility if you want to consume it to another user. You have to uh, rather write your own uh, new uh, inline policy and attach it and consume. So there is another section known as resource-based policy, which I'm not, uh, which will be not covered here, uh, because that that will be too much to uh, digest in a single session. So if we have very good understanding around IAM policy, uh, then resource-based resource -based policy is very simple. It will hardly take a few minutes to uh, uh, get an understanding. So basically, we write policies as I mentioned in a form of a JSON, and the key elements that are present in policies are four things that you have to uh, keep in mind. Effect, so effect, action, resource, and conditions. These four, four are the key elements. So um, let, let us go over here. So this is how a policy looks like, right? So this is specific to AWS managed policy. Um, so if you see the right, uh, the right side type, you can see AWS managed. And the policy name is like Amazon DMS Redshift uh, S3 role or uh, Amazon S3 full access. So we'll go uh, and see what this Amazon S3 full access does, right? So as I mentioned, it's a JSON, um, uh, JSON in terms of JSON, we define the policies. So here we see um, two things on top, right? Version as well as statement. So version is something that can be anything. But statement is something uh, is the key, right? Within the statement, we have um, four important parameters. So as I mentioned in the previous slide, these are the four things, effect, action, resource, and condition. So effect is basically you have two possible use cases, either allow or deny. So only possible values within the effect parameter is allow or deny, right? If you want to allow something, you write it as an allow. If you want to deny something, you write it as a deny, right? And action, action is something, uh, you can call it as a API call or action, right? Resources, basically what service you want to uh, give access, right? For example, here uh, uh, we talk about S3 full access, Amazon S3 full access, which is nothing but uh, when, it, when, you, when there is a wildcard or star within the resource, it means you can do, uh, you can access anything. Right, any services within AWS. But action is something which will define what particular service and what action can be done. Here we can see in the action, there is an S3. So this basically means this particular policy or uh, the set of instructions is for S3 and the star represents what actions can be done. So here there is a wildcard star for, for after the S3. So means or uh, it's a full access, right? You can do anything at the S3 level. You can create S3 bucket, delete S3 bucket, read and write S3 contents, right? So that is what it means here. So how do we go about uh, creating a policy, right? So in the top screenshot, you can see here, uh, we, ha we have an existing bucket in the name of block.trivikram.tk, right? Uh, it's like a, it's a 
uh, static website hosted in this particular bucket, which is publicly accessible. So this particular bucket, right? Each so in AWS there is something known as ARN, uh, Amazon Resource Name. So basically, ARN is nothing but an identifier. So AWS uses this ARN to identify what resource it is and what uh, objects within those resources it is. So here in this case, the ARN points to the bucket block. .tk. So what we do is while writing policy in the second screenshot, um, so I've consumed a visual editor. If you're very good in JSON, you can start coding in JSON itself. But for the uh, easier uh, understanding, uh, we'll just go over visual editor, right? So within the S3 section, we'll see a service. So we here we select S3. So we want to write policy for S3, right? So we select S3 and actions. Actions are like, Currently, say there is a need to only read. I want someone to just read the content of my bucket, blog.3vikram.tk bucket. I want someone to just read the bucket contents. I don't want him to either write to the content or write to the bucket uh, or make changes or modify my contents in the bucket or delete my bucket, right? All I want to do is just allow him to write, uh, sorry, read the uh, contents of the bucket. So for that sake, um, I have selected get object and bucket get bucket ACL. So get object allows you to retrieve the objects within that bucket and get bucket ACL is basically nothing but uh, get a, uh, what are the permissions that are there in the bucket, particular bucket and resource. So in the resource section, um, we will see, uh, so basically resource section uh, points out to what resource you're applying this policy, right? So I am applying this policy to my bucket. So the bucket name is block.trivikram.tk. So the resource will be this. So we basically copy the ARN, right, of the bucket, bucket ARN to here, right? And please uh, make a note of one thing here. When we specify the resource, right, the ARN, if you see the last, right, after block.trivikram.tk, there is a slash followed by a star, right? So let me see whether I can annotate. Right. Um, so there is something known as slash and star. So you have to mention this if someone wants to access this bucket, because if just the bucket ARN is mentioned, right? If the this only the ARN is mentioned, then the end user who has this policy attached to his user or a group will not be able to access the contents of the bucket or will not be able to read the objects in the bucket. So make sure you include slash followed by star, right? This will enable you to access contents, contents in the bucket. And then on top of all these three, the service actions and resources, we also have um, option to specify any specific conditions, right? So here in the in this condition, I've just uh, mentioned, I've given an IP address, a particular IP address as a source IP. So what this particular policy means is, I am allowing access to my S3 bucket to only read the content from a particular IP address, right? So the conditions, um, conditions, but uh, conditions uh, parameter will help you to write controls, more controls, granular controls. Here I've just restricted to a single IP. So any IP other than this, right? Other than this, any IP trying to access my packet will not be able to access. So this is how we create a policy manually, right? So this particular screenshot right couple of screenshots the left side of the screenshot shows you uh, types of policies right so in the top we see customer managed policy so previously we have written this policy and i have named this policy as a uh, sample customer policy which is a customer managed policy that i have written and on top of it there are other policies that aws gives us for our uh, uh, so that we can live, start leveraging it Right. So let us go uh, and read the JSON document of the cust customer managed policy that we wrote. Um, so this is how that JSON structure will look like. So here uh, we'll see the same. So the effect is allow followed by what actions. So actions are in S3 level. I'm, uh, I'm enabling get object. That is basically read the object from the bucket and read the uh, access control list of, of that particular bucket. And on, uh, on the resource, uh, I've just mentioned my bucket, the ARN of my bucket followed by slash and star. So slash and star will enable um, uh, the users to access the buckets, whoever uh, I attach this policy to, 
right and on top of it uh, top of it there is a condition as well where i mentioned only if the user is coming from this particular source ip then allow right then allow accessing my content if the ip address is different from this uh, this particular specified one then do not allow right so this is how the policy looks like um right so now we we'll, we have a very high level understanding of how the policy looks like and how we write policies right then we get into the next key components that are user role and groups right so we'll start with iam user what it means so as i mentioned iam user is nothing but a end user right it's a single user usually in a cloud space it is identified by email addresses right email addresses so so iam users uh, uh, so the, they come into picture once you log into the management console or you're authenticated into the aws account cloud account group uh, as i uh, earlier mentioned it eases out right rather than writing policies for each and every user in a company uh, you can club those users to groups and attach a single policy to the group so that way uh, a lot of redundancy um, works are uh, can be avoided so i am role as i told earlier it is um, something very most of the use cases which i see for an iam role is cross account access right if there is say there are two aws accounts account a and account b and say one of the user in account a wants to access some resource in account b right say he wants to access s3 bucket a specific s3 bucket or all the s3 buckets in account b so we can leverage iam role so that once we write the policies and attach iam role we can uh, uh, basically use this role to uh, attach it to the user and get access to it this uh, we'll see practically how uh, this works and that will give a very clear picture so so on a, on a very high level when we talk about iam policies iam policies can be attached to any entities iam entities users groups and roles so that's a common concept right policies is something common across users groups and roles and policies are nothing but statements json statement where we define what are the things can be done and what are the uh, actions authorized and on top of it we can also include conditions so i am user as we have already spoken uh, it's targeted to particular users so you write a policy uh, and attach it to the user so here in this case there, there are three users susan dave and bob so each user are referred to as iam users and you can attach policies to each individual users right so how do we create an iam user right so we understand policy how to create a policy and how to interpret policies right how to read the policy and get an understanding now we'll see how to create an iam user within aws so all we do is um, we go to the iam section click on add user and we start adding the uh, particular user in this case i've taken a simple user sorry sample user so the user can be anyone it can be an actual employee of the company or it can be even some service account right say if i want to run a particular cron job or any automation scripts or any uh, tasks or any scheduling jobs to be run and uh, what i can do is i can create a user for that purpose so similarly here i've written sample user and use this particular user uh, user to uh, run those jobs and access our aws uh, resources and data based on our uh, use cases required so here when we create a user we also have a couple of options where the access type can be just a web console aws web console or programmatic access so this is where the difference comes in say if it's an actual employee from say um, sales or a marketing right most of the time they will not have uh, use cases for writing programs or any scripts in that scenario we can just grant them aws managed console access so basically they will be able to log into the aws account and then see what are the things out there what are the things to get right say if it's a developer or an it or a security professional and basically in all this it on security and engineering uh, 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 groups there will be need for both access uh, aws management console as well as programmatic access so programmatic access if you enabled right it creates a set of keys access key and secret key 
So these two keys are used in your automation scripts, right? If you want to write an automation, you have some logic, uh, some logic written for some job, and that uh, say there is a script that wants to read data from S3 or read data from some other AWS services. What you can do is you can leverage this particular access key and uh, secret key that we create here. So that is one thing on top of it, you can also uh, write your uh, custom password or auto generate the password. And also you can enable forcing that particular user. If it's an employee or an end user, right? You can force them to reset the password during first login. This is this particular feature is more focused around security. And then, so this is the first step. And the second step is for that user, we attach policies, right? So if you remember, uh, I initially told we write policies right we have a policy but how to consume that policy right we have to attach this policy to an iam user a group or a role until we don't attach we'll be not able to consume this uh, aws resources right so here in this case uh, the previously written customer managed uh, policy that is sample hyphen customer underscore policy right this is something um, we will select for this particular user and we create right so the user is created on the completion, right? On, on, the, on the completion of creating the user, there is one critical uh, part. You will be uh, directed to a page which will have access key and secret access key, right? Make sure you download this key or make a note of this key, right? Or if you want to send an email, you can send an email to the particular user by clicking the send email, right? So, so this will help uh, in a programming per perspective. So this is what we see and so here, uh, the right side, the sample user, you can see if you go to users uh, in the right side of the screenshot, you can see sample user. And this sample user also has an ARN. There is something known as user ARN. Nothing but AWS will be able to identify what user it is, right? So if I create, uh, so here we have created sample user as the username. So say if there is an employee with the name Bob, right? I'll create a, a user account for Bob. And basically the ARN will point to user Bob. Right, and in the within the year, and you see something after IAM, right? It is some numerical number, eight one six zero one four double eight double zero seven three. So this is nothing but the account, AWS account. So this will differentiate actually, right? So for each account, uh, the uh, account number will vary. So basically, the year and will have what service it is. So IAM is the service, uh, and after that, the account account number and what entity it is iam entity so in this case here user if it is a group you will see group if it is a row you will see role followed by the name of that so here we have mentioned sample user as the user and similarly the policy so the similar policy which we saw earlier is attached to it so this is the policy where where we have uh, granting this user access to only specific bucket block.3vikram.tk to read the content just to read the content and uh, if that user is coming from a particular source set, right? So this is how you create user and attach policy. So we'll see group, right? Group is very similar to user. Uh, oh, the only difference, uh, only difference is that you basically club the users, right? Club the users to a single group, right? So um, so a group can contain multiple users, as we see here, and the policies which we saw in a previous slide. In a similar way, we can attach it to a group, right? 